Hey there, this is Anne Teagarden with episode 66 of the Unveiled podcast. Thanks for joining me today. I attended my nephew's wedding last month and I so enjoyed seeing the joy of their young love. It made me wax nostalgic for the feelings that Grant and I had on our wedding day. I remember at my wedding, I smiled so hard and so long that my cheeks actually hurt at the end of the day. So how do we get back there? Do you feel like maybe you've fallen out of romantic love or maybe that romantic love is waning? I think for everybody, it kind of waxes and wanes. If so, I invite you to join our group of couples that'll be journeying this year together to develop new habits, new mindsets, to radically change up our marriages and fall in love again. That's the goal. So if you're interested in more information about that, you can contact me at Ann, A-N-N-E, at Synergia, M-M, S-Y-N-E-R-G-I-A-M-M.com. And I promise I won't harass you, but I'll give you more information about how you can join us for free on February 16th to hear the plan for the year and then decide whether or not you want to join us. But in the meantime, what is one thing you can do to start the process of rekindling that flame? Remember. Take time to remember what you felt like on your wedding day. Take a few moments of quiet to just go back in time and feel those feelings again. I call that kind of fanning the embers. Then after you do that, in your mind, look forward to the end of this year and imagine feeling similarly in your current context. Visualize being madly in love again. Goal gurus always tell you to visualize your goals. It gives you hope and direction. And it even has positive impact on our biology because our imaginations are translated in our brains like tangible evidence. If you can remember waking from a dream and your heart is racing, well, it's the same way you can remember special times with your husband and hopefully get your heart racing again. In Revelation, Jesus is talking to John about the churches. And in chapter two, verses three to five, he says, you have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. Well, marriage and the church are often seen as pictures of each other. And many of us have endured hardship. We've hung in there, but we've lost that love that we had at first. And we've begun to judge each other and harbor resentment, but Christ tells us to repent and do the things you did at first. And this is true with our relationship with Jesus, and I believe it applies to our marriages as well. So remember, what did you do at first? When you were dating, most couples spend lots of time together. I used to get off work, go to Grant's apartment, make us dinner, hang out all evening, and then go home to bed. And we would spend weekend days together as well. Long talks were common and we looked forward to them. And we dreamed together. I don't know, were you similar? Did you do those things? But time, we spent a lot of time together. So give time to your spouse, invest in your relationship and get back to that first love. Another thing that can be helpful is to remember why did you fall in love with your spouse to begin with? Was it their sense of humor? Was it their work ethic, values, tenderness, cooking skills? Really sit down and take time to remember why you chose to spend the rest of your life with this person. You're smart, so I'm quite sure that you didn't make a mistake. But if you evaluate your spouse and remember that they are good, a quality person, then look for those same qualities in them today. I bet they're still there but sometimes we just don't see them anymore. Has your husband changed since you got married? Yeah, I hope so. I kind of hate for my 54-year-old husband to act like a 23-year-old. We all change over time, but some of those basic qualities are still there and may need to be coaxed out again. Or maybe what seemed cute then seems kind of annoying now. Sometimes they have to reframe things and look at them like we did when we were dating. Try to think back to those things. And how about all the hardships that you've been through over the years? Those things were hard on your relationship, but they also strengthened it. Remember that. Remember why you got married. 
because you wanted to spend the rest of your life with this person because you were better together than separate, because you helped each other be a better version of yourselves, because you wanted to unite sexually and enjoy each other's bodies, because he made your blood race through your veins. Go back to the beginning. Bring back some of those practices and feelings. Know that you can get to a place of being madly in love again, but with a more mature and comfortable feeling, which is actually better. Return to your first love. I know it can be hard, but it's a place to start. This week, look at pictures from when you were dating or maybe your wedding. That may help spark some feelings, reminisce together about the wedding, you know, how the food came out an hour late and how the cake was leaning on its pedestal and we all thought it would fall over. Oh, yeah, that was my wedding, but I'm sure you have your own stories. Will this solve all your problems? No, absolutely not. But it's a great place to start and a great way to harvest hope. If you're unhappy in your marriage, you may need help. We all need help from time to time, so it's nothing to be ashamed of. The smartest thing we can do is reach out and ask for help. So we're here to help if you'd like, or go find a local counselor or a friend at your church to help. Don't stay stuck in unhappy, okay? Remember back to when it was good. Think back and then work forward. When you finish this episode, I encourage you to take a few moments to be still and remember, truly do this before you forget and go on to the next thing. Take this first step. Feel the feelings. Project them into the future. Remember the things you used to do together. Remember what you loved about your spouse then and why you chose to marry them. Remember, go back to your first love and set the stage for the future. I hope this episode was inspiring. Please share it with others if you found it helpful. Word of mouth is how this podcast reaches more women and you can help me. So if there's a topic that you would like for me to cover, please put it in the comments or you can email me at ann at synergiamm.com. And I'd love for you in the comments to write a funny memory from your own wedding. I'd like to hear those. Have a great week and go in peace and joy.